All right, so let's look at some examples of how we would use the unit circle to help us find answers. So if we wanted to find the sine of 210, um, first thing you need to do is locate where 210 degrees is. Now, if you haven't filled in the degrees on your unit circle also, that's a very handy thing to do. So take a second right now, fill in the degrees on your unit circle. But on this one here, we can see that 200 degrees is right here. Um, I'm going to draw in the triangle just because we should always picture this in our mind when we're thinking about this. So the triangle that we're looking at is right here, which also tells us that this angle right here is a 30 degree angle. And so um, we're looking at this point right here, which has the point of a negative square roots of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half for the x and the y coordinates. Now the sine is the y coordinates. We discovered that a little bit earlier. So the sine of negative 210 degrees, or positive 210 degrees, is negative 1 half. We do the same thing with the cosine. Cosine of 150 degrees, well 150 degrees is right here. Here's the coordinates for 150 degrees. The x value for that is the square root of 3 over 2, negative. And the sine of 300 degrees, 300 degrees is all the way around to here. The coordinates are 1 half, negative 3 halves, and we're looking for the sine. So it is also the negative square roots of 3 over 2. Now the interesting thing is, you could have found this with a calculator, but we didn't need a calculator. If you put sine of 210 degrees in your calculator, you do get negative 1 half. But this is just an awesome way to do it without technology, which um, if you put negative 0.5 as your answer, not negative 1 half, then it would be wrong because we are looking for the value without technology. And same thing here. If you put the cosine of 150 in, you get negative 0.866, which is the same thing as negative square roots of 3 over 2. But this is the more correct way to write it because we are encouraged not to use technology with this. Now we're going to look at what happens when it's the tangent. So when we um, are looking at tangent, remember the ratios of tangent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. So the opposite side is the y value and the adjacent side is the x value. So for the tangent of 0, well 0 degrees is uh, the point 1, 3. So I'm just going to make a little note right here. 0 degrees or is the point 1, 0. So um, it would be the y value over the x value, which would just be 0. Tangent of 30 degrees would be the y value, which is 1 half, over the x value, which is the square root of 3 over 2. To divide by a fraction, I invert it and multiply. So then I get uh, this 1 over the square root of 3, which is if I, if I rationalize the denominator, is the square root of 3 over 3. The tangent of 45 would be the square root of 2 over 2 over the square root of 2 over 2, which reduces to just 1. Tangent of 60, if we look at this picture up here, square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, so square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, so if I multiply by 2 over 1, I end up with just the square root of 3. And the tangent of 90 would be 1 over 0 but that makes the whole problem undefined. Now, also the awesome thing here is if you put these in your calculator, you would come up with the same values, but we didn't have to use technology to figure it out. Continuing on, let's find some other tangent values. Well, the tangent of 120, so we look at our unit circle, we find the point that makes a 120 angle. And we do the same thing. We put the value of y, which is the square root of 3 over 2, 
over the value of x, which is negative 1 half, and we simplify that. So the 2's cancel, and you just get negative square roots of 3. So square root of 3. Tangent of 315. Tangent uh, 315 is right here. The values are square roots of 2 over 2, negative square roots of 2 over 2, and positive square roots of 2 over 2, which just reduces to negative 1. Tangent of 210 would be negative 1 half over negative square roots of 3 over 2. Multiply by the reciprocal. So the negatives cancel out, the 2s cancel out, and you get 1 over square roots of 3, which we know we have to rationalize the denominator there, so we get the square root of 3 over 3. Tangent of 270 would just be negative 1 over 0, which also is undefined. Now, finding the values of negative trig angles, what we need to do is find the positive angle and then flip over the x-axis to find the trig value of the negative angle. So on this here, the sine of 210. So if we look at our unit you know, scroll up so we can see our whole unit you know, circle here. Remember, this is negative 210. So negative 210 if you look at the unit circle and start at the zero, which is the x positive axis, and go around, you would end up up here at negative 210, which is the same thing as positive 150. So we're going to, you could think of this as finding the sine of positive 150 is the same thing as finding the sine of negative 210. So we looked at it like there's two different ways you could think of it. You could think of the negative 210, which would be down here, um, flip it up to 150, or you could, you know, honest, just think of, well, positive 210 would be here, so negative 210 would be up here. Either way, you end up at 150. The sine of 150 is the y value, so it is 1 half. Cosine of negative 330, well, negative 330, you could think of it that 330 is here. If you flip it across the x-axis, it would be right here at this point. Or you could say, well, I know that to go negative, you're going all the way around to here. Either way, you end up at cosine of 30. The cosine value is the x value, so it's the square root of 3 over 2. Now if we want to find the tangent of negative 45. So 45 degrees is right here, so you could think of it as being flipped across the x-axis at 315, or find negative 45 would be going clockwise down to this point right here. We would then find that this is the point square root of 2, 2, negative square root of 2, 2. Then you have to remember tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, which we've found earlier to be the negative or the y value, which is the square root of 2 over 2, over the x value, which is the square root of 2 over 2. So that just cancels out to be equal to negative 1. The sine of negative 180, well, negative 180, here's positive 180. Negative 180 is going to be the exact same point. So it's going to be right here, and we're looking for the sine. The sine is the y value, so that answer would be 0. Now to find trig values of angles greater than 360, think about coterminal angles. So you could, if you have a negative, you could also add 360 to make it into a positive coterminal angle. Or if it's bigger than 360, we can just simply subtract 360 to find the number that is less than 60 or 360. So that would be the cosine of 60 degrees. 
So you would find 60 degrees right here. Cosine is the x value. So the cosine of 420 is 1 half. Sine of 495, same thing. It's bigger than 360. So I'm going to subtract 360 from that. And I get 495 minus 360 is 135 degrees. So if I look at my degrees right here, 135 is right there. With those coordinates, I'm looking for the sine. So it is the positive square roots of 2 over 2.